Back to where it all began, Imric, my favourite lord in the game, and surely some of yours as well. And today we're running through a three section guide which will help you punch up and destroy legendary difficulty without any cheese or exploits, all dragon battles, all quest battles, how to do them all in a single turn. And to top it all off, in a separate video, we will have a 10 turn step by step guide of how to get this exact start, which is, in my opinion, the strongest start for Imric in Immortal Empires. Now let's dive into my top. Top five tips of how to dominate with the Imric, and that starts with East, not West. There's been a lot of talk online because of the ability to get Nagashazar at turn eight. Credit to One Take Man, so he's an up-and-coming YouTuber. Please check him out. I do disagree with this being the best way to go about it, but it creates some excellent conversation. And rather than pick that apart, I want to push you guys at the end of this. I'm going to link it. He has a guide of how to get an absolute banger start with Grimgore. His way is just unbeatably good. So please, at the end of this video, check him out and check out that video because it is just money. So going back to this, Nagashazar you can take by turn eight, but since quite early in the life cycle, this has always been my preferred playstyle with Imric because you don't get surrounded as easily, especially with Chaos Dwarves here now. You are so likely to be um, overextended and attacked in all directions. Also, when you move to the west here, you have mountains you have areas where people can underway and you can't. You are slower moving through this terrain. They're not. So a huge part of Total War is not giving in to your opponent's strengths and keeping them to where you are strong. We are an elf. We are going to be strongest around the coastline and away from the mountains. So build yourself around that instead. In 10 turns, you can capture the Dragon Isles, and the best thing about this is it's a choke point right here, and what you can do from here is you can destroy Gorst, build yourself up here. Sooner or later, Gorst will declare war on you, and that's just fine. You can set up ambushes, and there we go, he just ran into one. So this whole area has excellent ambush success chance. Of course, the biggest setback of setting up in the Dragon Isles is that you have the penalty to construction as well as construction time. This can make you a lot of money this area, but it does cost an absolute boatload to build up to the highest tiers. For High Isles, you have some great tricks to circumvent this. Ports not only provide great cash, they also provide great growth rate. Make sure that you build the Elven Embassy here because it will also multiply that sweet gold as well as improve your global trade. Getting mages with the administrator trade will help reduce the cost as well as the time. You can also use multiple administrators, so having a hero variant as well as a lord variant will stack this benefit, allowing you to help circumvent some of these long construction times and save you a boatload of cash. So those are your easy ways around getting this area grown up. Tip number two is that magic is greater than dragons. You are absolutely famed being the Prince of Kalidor and the dragons are kind of his thing. But here's the tip, both Imric and his mage Michaela, who's the MVP, can both get dragon mounts. You don't need to put dragons in all of your armies and you can use them as a reserve force. As such, you don't actually need to rush to get them. The dragon hunting mechanic has two advantages in the early game. One is that you can hold on to the quest battles and do them whenever you want. Don't just rush to get them. Make sure you take your time and do them when you have time to heal up. But doing them opportunely will allow you to have the dragon up your sleeve, give you an extra item, as well as provide you with a lot of gold so they can have their uses on your more quiet turns. Challenging the dragon will give you a quest that you can interact with at any time. You can actually pocket all five, like you'll see me do, and then do them all at once or whenever is safe or convenient with you. The other one that I only recommend on the very first one, not any time after, is bargain with the dragon and this will give you 70 influence but a hot tip here is that you might want to have that influence the very first dragon encounter so here's the rule you should follow if the first dragon encounter you get you'll be able to see up here who it is if it's the black dragon or the forest dragon always get those you want those as your first fights because they're the easiest and provide great benefit otherwise feel free to roll the dice and simply take the influence taking the influence will allow you to get really strong nobles as well as better mages in the early game now there is a massive misconception that you need to rush to get your dragons as quickly as possible, but this is not the case. Take your time. If you lose your army, you lose your ability to defend yourself, and that is way more tragic. You can even save up all the quests and do them at the end. Rushing to get dragons is not the key behind this, and even with Imric, they're still quite expensive. Be the judge of when you get these, and remember keeping them in reserve to spring five flying beasts onto an unsuspecting enemy will stop even the most fierce of revolts. What you can do from here is you can destroy Gorst, build yourself up here, and then make a trade border with Cathay. So 
Point number three, trade ally borders. You want to build yourself up, so along this line here, we have a nice friendly barrier with Cathay. Cathay are an excellent trade partner. They're always very wealthy. You can want to support them in their wars. Once you clear this area, you have nothing else to worry about. This allows you to direct all of your effort to the west here as well as the north. You want to preserve the Dowie kingdoms here as best you can. Help them fight to win because, again, they're great trade partners. So Cathay to the east, the dwarves to the west, and eventually fight to help liberate Kislev from the north. Don't worry too much about venturing further to the west because it kind of never ends. Make sure that you build the Elven Embassy here because it will also multiply that sweet gold as well as improve your global trade. This is a side tip, make sure you build the Elven Embassy everywhere there is a port, have at least one. It will give you influence and really help multiply that trade. And once all your settlements are built up, Tier 5 or even Tier 4, make sure you get Tribute to the Phoenix King, which will compound your trade revenue even more. The combination of these two tricks, as well as building lots of resource buildings, having strong partners is what will keep you very, very strong. Going through our trade partners here, so 3,600, 3,300, as you see, we are not short of money at all, nearly 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. And this is due to having so many resources, as well as multipliers stacked on them. You will notice frequent caravans traveling through the Darklands. Always double click on it and check in the diplomacy screen. Is this a major faction, i.e. Ming or Ying? Check to see if it's someone that they don't like, someone they're not allied with, and if that's the case, feel free to attack them, but otherwise, having a peaceful border is more than what money can buy. Next point, take Kalidor, but not all of Ulf 1. Now, what do I mean by this? You will have the opportunity very early on to take Kalidor back when you raise, loot, or sack six individual settlements. You should absolutely do this as soon as possible for no other reason than this is your homeland and they can pry it from your cold, dead fingers. So you need to take it before this faction gets destroyed. Now, once you're up here, you can just generally wait and you'll be able to confederate Alariel in due time. However, I have confederated Detain here and I decided to do a bit of a flex campaign and go take over all the north. And you know what? I would not recommend it. It's a bloody terrible idea because look at all of this territory. It's inhospitable climate. I'm playing a Tyrian campaign, focusing on here when what I really need to be doing is focusing on down here. I could have committed these resources to taking these settlements here and unpleasant climate isn't actually that bad but very bad climate is a huge pain in the ass and a roadblock to your growth so again you should be focusing on this area capturing dragons then in the late game I'd say after turn 100 or around that point then you can focus on your crusade this way don't decide to be a hero like I did and try to take over the world I just wanted to see what is possible but still this will open up a ton of trade options for you and getting lots of trade resources and trade partners is absolutely your number one priority and you'd be amazed who you can even trade with. As I don't know you can see your natural resources and how much you're exporting. Last and certainly not least we need to focus on military. We need to make you an absolute badass so you can handle some of the seriously stressful situations you might be in from being attacked in multiple directions. This means efficient armies. As you can see here this is a very bare bones army. See the video next week and you'll see how we defeat five dragons plus a quest battle in a row using only this. Now nobles are excellent, you can use them to bolster your army with conscientious or emollient but this is one of the easiest traits to find and that is honed. This will increase your melee defense and attack on your spear units. You can get two of these in your army giving you a boost of plus 10. These basic spearmen are almost acting like pseudo silver and guard with 63 melee defense. That is bonkers good for a basic unit. But what I would typically do is replace these spearmen with silver and guard. You only need a single barracks in your entire empire. I only build one up to tier three because you don't need them, but you can globally recruit these guys in two turns. So to spend a turn, just disband these guys like so and then hire three silver and guard. Yes, it keeps your army still for a couple of turns, but these guys are worth it. Get nine ranks on them and you will never ever look back. If you're struggling a bit more later, pass these archers to another new lord and then hire Sisters of Avalon, though I'd recommend doing that locally because it will take forever to do so. 
In terms of leveling Imric up, you really have to be aware of your military in the early game. So your absolute priority, of course, is first of all, Bright Marcher to improve your movement, then max out Bowmaster. Your basic archers will carry you most of the game. Also, you should always have five spearmen in your army to hold that line, and this is an excellent upgrade, helping those spears bat well into the mid game and even beyond. Around level 13, you will be able to get his personal tree, and this is his strongest skill. Plus three heroes and being able to hire no at any province is amazing and this should always lead you. His personal tree has some good and some forgettable abilities but you always want Dragonheart, Falls Armament as well as Ancient Pride but this can wait. Don't boost a dragon abilities until the mid to late game. Don't bother with Skymaster until you're around level 30. You will have enough points to max that and of course max all the abilities to make a dragon stack work but before then get favorable wins to boost level 7 archers as well as a movable force so those silver and guard can really really punch up and you don't need to spend a lot of money on his army. After this make sure you build along his personal tree, get melee defense and a melee attack and then Lord of Dragons. Even if you don't proceed any further down this tree, this ability is an absolute death sentence to anything you run into. You can slay dragons, lords, anything by crippling their ability to fight back. This alone will make dragon battles that much easier. Moving along you can continue down the bottom line and it can be recommended because Quartermaster 9% upkeep as well as an additional 8 will really help reduce your army. Doesn't matter, dragons are still very expensive even though you get your discounted for being Imric. And once you hit level 30, once you're built up, that is when you drop 3 points into Skymaster and a point in Heart of Flame and those dragons can really rip and of course get dragon packed as soon as you can. It's a free casting of piercing bolts of burning. Imric is not the main character in his campaign, Michaela the Fire Mages, she will do 90% of the killing in just about any of your battles. You can also bolster up with many of the amazing quest items you'll obtain through completing Imric's quest battles. So just make sure every time you finish a quest battle, look at the equipment, you can put them on your nobles, particularly on your mage, and of course on mighty Imric himself. Keep two nobles, I would really recommend that. On foot or on horse, they can hold the line very well, and on the eagle, they can intercept flying units. Very useful in the quest battles, as you'll see. You do not need to build more dragons because you quite simply obtain them through quest battles. Honestly, just spearmen and silver and guard, as well as archers upgraded to Sisters of Avalon, are all you will ever need, plus these guys. But also, if you get the chance of Valor Master of Hoeth, they are an excellent line holder, and their earth blood can heal your characters. So those are my two top five tools. So the rundown is take the Dragon Isles first in 10 turns, check out the walkthrough on how to do that, make peace and help consolidate Cathay, keep them as a powerful trade ally, help back the dwarfs, keep them alive because they will make you rich by being their friends, control the Darklands here, make sure you get yourself secured up to here and then you can start fighting off chaos helping the good guys here and then start invading down here so it's all up to you from there but the priority is take this front secure and then help the dwarfs win here if you can do those two things you will never ever die and because this is such a hard base to get to it is well worth the investment i never even attacked these guys because it wasn't really worth it um and in ulf one you don't do what i did here don't be a hero and decide to go on crusade just get yourself calador take your time your game might last a bit longer, but it will be way more fast-paced, trust me. Stay tuned for the dragon battles, and I'll see you soon.